so what stochastic depth is doing is it tries to ignore adding identity or adding f of x sometimes to the end of the result okay let me clearly explain as you can see this le let's say the vertical lines are layers and the number above the vertical lines is probability that you'll add the residual to the output so what stochastic depth says is let's say there's a probability i'll draw a unique number if my unique number is lesser than the probability i'll add my residual to the output of the layer so how does this help one uh, one and a direct help is regularization so if you keep on training your net continuously over the images it starts overfitting to the image you doing like like what every other uh, method which says drop a parameter or or anything else does dropping a layer also helps you with regularization and what else it helps with the speed as well why so when you're choose picking and choosing which layer to run or when to run a con net you're ignoring running con net certain times also you're just sending the identity from previous function through and you're not running the residual so uh, from the computation uh, around 70% you're only running con net 70% of the time if you're assigning dk probability to a layer so this so so one direct output of it is accuracy you can see that till 400 epochs residual networks without stochastic depth and weak stochastic depth are performing same so after 400 epochs what is happening the regularization part of the advantage comes in handy and uh, the rest nets with stochastic depth give a greater accuracy and what else as i told speed up you can see almost uh, so uh, i'm giving test errors on y axis and survival probability the numbers above the vertical lines on x axis by choosing what kind of a test error you want and what kind of survival prob uh, probability you want for the layers you can see that you can get a speed up up to 2x so wh why the speed up still we are able to train it in one week why the speed up let's say tomorrow you want to run a uh, resnet which is 1200 layers deep so 1200 layers deep is the difference between months to couple of weeks probably it takes you to run a 1200 layer resnet for four weeks and stochastic depth can run it just in two weeks so a uh, boring graph on vanishing gradient if you actually care about that and other methods which i want to leave you with this because uh, i have a couple of minutes i'll try to i'm not doing justice to the methods but i'll try to explain what they are the recent past they have published something called a swap out method swap out method is also a regularization method where they add re residual feed forward and drop out as well fractal nets which are uh, hyped called ultra deep neural nets which say that we don't need residuals by stacking these fractal nets together will still give a output and residual the third one which says that instead of just adding the residual from the previous layer you can add an ensemble of previous layers residual also to the current layer and give you the output so last one yeah so i've done implementation of the stochastic depth method and residual learning it's on my github page that's it thank you Thank you. Oh, yeah. So, what is the problem you have uh, used for, you know, use this residual? So, 
Can you okay. speak loudly, please? What was the problem you were trying to solve with this residual uh, neural network? Uh, was that the ImageNet problem, or was it something else? Some so specific pr problem? primarily, it was the vanishing gradient problem. So it was uh, the simple motivation is uh, from eight layers to 22 layers, I could go easily without facing any problems. But when I'm trying to do that after 20, when I go 50, doing the similar thing, my accuracy is going down instead of going up. So that was reduced to the vanishing gradient problem. And to solve that, we came, uh, they came up with the residual learning idea. Oh, ImageNet. ImageNet and CIFAR. Hi, uh, this is hi, this is Dilip. Uh, oh, so yeah. I, I had two questions. One, why should this adding the residue help? And two, in one of the graphs that you showed, uh, maybe around 200 epochs after that, there was a sudden drop. Why was there a sudden drop? So the the sudden drop is because change of uh, learning rate. But oh, in okay. usual methods, what you do is you write a callback for changing your rate of learning after changing sub certain number of epochs. So that was the sudden drop, and intuition behind residual net like uh, at, at still the risk of sounding stupid uh, deep learning is still a very black box method but if you ask my intuition uh, it's like you are ha you are adding the state of a previous layer to give the context to the current input so this will help with the gradient cause back propagation method you need to have a context of the whole thing and you are optimizing the whole function Hello. Yeah. How close is the LSTM? So can you speak up, please? How close is your LSTM analogy? I mean, your yeah. gut feeling on how close is the LSTM analogy? OK. Uh, uh, it, it was, it's widely discussed on Reddit. If Reddit is not a very credible source of discussions, uh, there is a publication by MIT PhD students which draws a close analogy between residual nets and RNNs. So I could uh, offline give you the paper as well if you like it. So yeah, thank you.